Now for 4.6 part 2, disc and washer. Now what we can also have are circular cross sections that can be formed by revolving very thin rectangles about an axis of revolution. What they're going to make are discs. And so they're going to have a little bit of width like this. And so that width would be my delta x. We also can make them this way and have some width. That width is going to be delta y. It depends how you make them. Now if we look at example, well, this formula, I'm sorry, volume is equal to, well, this is a circle. So if I add up all of the areas of the circle times dx or dy, that will give me my volume, three dimensions again. And so let's look at example number five. Set up an integral for the volume of the solid revolving around the region bounded by y equals x squared, x equal to zero, and about the x-axis. So I do have a video here to show you if I can get this up. So I have this region here that I'm going to take and I'm going to revolve each one of these pieces around this x-axis. And I don't know, some of you can see this and some of you have trouble seeing this, but it looks like some sort of cone, but funny shape. So let me see if I can revolve this. So we find the volume and I'm going to revolve around y equal to zero and there's the shape. And if you see, I can twist that around a little bit so you can get an idea of the shape that we have. So that's what's happening here. And then each one of these little different colors are going to be the different widths, delta x, that we do have. So in our representation here, here's our cut, delta x. So that's going to be represented by a dx. And we're going to be revolving it around this axis right here. So this distance right here would be my radius. Well, that's going to change depending upon where I am on this interval from 0 to 1. But then that is dictated by this curve. And so that height is always going to be, or that radius is always going to be y equals x squared. So if I do my area, it's going to be pi r squared, which is pi. My radius is x squared squared. So all I have to do now is set up my volume 0 to 1 because that's where my x's are traveling on my delta x and I'm going to go pi times x squared squared dx. Now this pi is a constant so it can also go out in front either way that you like. So then that's your setup to find the volume and now I do have an x squared but that is being squared so that is our how do I want to say it? That's two dimensions and that's our third dimension. Example number six, find the volume of the solid formed by revolving the region in quadrant one bounded by y equals x squared, x equal to zero, y equal to four about the y-axis. We need a picture. So y equals x squared. That would go through these. And it does say the first quadrant. So that would be where I'm at. Now is it this region here or this region here? Well, it does say y equal to 4. And so it looks like it's going to be this region in here and x equal to 0. So that's my region. So my cuts are going to be, oh, look at this, about the y-axis. And so my cuts are going to be perpendicular to the y-axis. Cuts are always perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So to find the length of this cut now, and this is delta y, so we're in dy, you just take the right minus the left. Huh, the right minus the left. Well, that doesn't matter here because the left is 0, and so it's just going to be my curve, but my curve has to be in terms, x in terms of y. So x is equal to plus or minus the square root of y. Well, this piece on the right here is going to be the positive portion, so x is equal to the square root of y for what we're doing. That's my r then. Now, so now I should be in business. Area is equal to pi r squared, so area is equal to pi times square root of y quantity squared. My integral, what do, what do my y's run from? 0 to 2? No, 0 to 4. They're the y's. So I start down here and I finish up here. And so then I have my pi can go out 
out in front, and then I have square root of y quantity squared. It does say find this volume so we can continue on. This is just y. So the antiderivative is y squared over 2. I'm going to evaluate from 0 to 4, and I still need my pi in there. So this is going to be equal to 4, 16. That would make 8 pi minus, plug in 0, you get 0. So simply 8 pi. That would be your volume. So if you had units, which you don't, we usually don't ask you for units in this thing, but it would be in units cubed. So now we get to the washer. This is a really long video. You might have to take a break on this, and I'm really sorry, but there's a lot in here. So if we take the washer method, this happens when we revolve about a line, which is not one of the boundaries on what we have. So the axis of rotation is not adjacent to the region that we are rotating. So if we look at example number seven here, we're going to take this y equals negative x squared plus x, and we're going to revolve it around... Well, that's, I mean, I'm sorry, the region is bounded by these two things. And then for this one, we're going to revolve it around the x-axis. So to set this one up, I just have my delta x, and then I'm going to rotate that around. So I'm going to go from 0 to 1, and my x's are just going to be the negative x squared plus x. I have to square that because I have the pi r squared, and then that would be dx. And that's my volume. Now, what if we revolve something that is below here? So we're trying to revolve around x equal to, I'm sorry, y equal to negative 1. Now, if you notice, we have this big gap in here, which we've called little r right here. The r, the little r, is the gap that we do have. The big r is the outside edge to the axis of rotation. Any r has to be drawn to the axis of rotation. So I wrote that there. Uh, and think of it like a spoke on a tire, on a bicycle tire. If you don't have the spoke going all the way to the tire, that's not revolving around our axis of rotation, which is the axle. So with this washer formula, what we're doing is we're subtracting out the volume of the hole. So that would be the hole. And a washer, it's like a washer that looks like this if you do the cross section. It's got a hole in the middle, like a donut. And so we need to subtract that portion out. And I like to write it as two separate integrals, but, well, you can do it, diff you can do it this way here, or as two separate integrals. But let me find r first. r is going to be top minus bottom, so that's my curve. So that'd be negative x squared plus x minus negative 1. That would be my top minus my bottom, like we did in the previous unit. Little r is going to be top minus bottom 2, so it would be 0 minus negative 1, which would be 1. So now to set this up, we just go pi r squared minus pi r squared. So I do two different integrals. You might not like this or not, but you can put it into one package. Pi r squared would be negative x squared plus x plus 1 quantity squared dx, and then we're going to subtract out what happens when I do the other one, which would be pi 0 to 1 of 1 squared dx. And why I split it into two pieces like this is because some people will take this one and they'll subtract that one and get 0. That's not right because it's, it's pi r squared minus pi r squared. So be careful with that. And I like the two pieces for the washer method. Up to you. You can use the one piece or you can use the two pieces. Just like going to the beach. Now part C, we have to draw in our own R's. So we start at our axis of rotation. We go as far as we can to the outer edge. R, big R is our outer radius. So that's the outer edge. And then I go from my axis of rotation to the inner edge not as far as I can. Little r represents our gap. And so if I set these up, I can see that big R is equal to 2, and then little r is equal to, to 2 minus my curve. So that's my negative x squared plus x. So for the length of the cut for this r right here, this little r, it's going to be top minus the bottom 
the length of the cut. That's all you have to do. So I can rewrite this as 2 plus x squared minus x. And so I'm going to be running from 0 to 1 on my x's. And I'm going to have pi r squared, the big R. Big R is just 2, so that's 2 squared dx minus pi r squared. I got the little r, so I'm going to section that off. 2 plus x squared minus x quantity squared dx. There you go. That's how you set that one up. Go back and double check yourself. I got pi r squared. That looks good. I got pi r squared. That looks good. dx, dx. That's my third dimension. Double check your answers all the time to make sure that you have your pieces that you want. Okay, example number eight. Here we go. Except the integrals of volumes formed by revolving this around y equals x squared and y equals x plus 2. Here's the picture. We want to revolve around the x-axis. There's the x-axis. Axis of rotation. All cuts have to lead to the axis of rotation. So when I draw this, I'm going to start at the axis of rotation for my big R. And I'm going to go all the way to the outer edge. So this is my big R. If I want to do my little r, my little r starts at the axis of rotation and goes to the inner edge. So that's your little r. Top minus bottom will serve us on both of these. So little r is going to be the curve, which is x squared. And then I'm going to subtract off 0, top minus bottom. Big R is going to be the other curve, which is the x plus 2, minus the bottom, which is the 0. You can ignore the zeros if you wish. Well, you should. It's fine. And so there's my big R, little r. So it's going to be pi negative 1 to 2. I should have found my points of intersection, but it looks like that's what those are. And then we have our pi r squared, big R, x plus 2, quantity squared dx, minus pi, negative 1 to 2, x squared, squared, dx. Did I have pi r squared dx? Pi r squared dx? Yep, there we go. Part b, if we revolve this around y equal to 4, so that's my axis of rotation. Draw that in, and then you draw R, big R, from the axis of rotation to the outer edge here. That's my big R. And then I draw my little r from the axis of rotation to the inner curve. So that would be that R, top minus bottom. So big R is going to be 4 minus my curve. My curve is x squared. Then I have little r which would be the top, minus the x plus 2. Don't forget to cover that up. And so if I want to simplify that, I can. 4 minus 2 is 2, minus x. Didn't write that very well. So now I'm running for my volume. I'm running from 0, I'm sorry, negative 1 to 2, pi r squared, big R. So I have the 4 minus x squared, quantity squared, dx minus my little r pi negative 1 to 2 my little r is 2 minus x pi r squared dx there it is the great summing machines finding the volume for us okay i hope you enjoyed this maybe i can show you some pictures in class cross sections we probably will do little cutouts for you which is kind of fun to get a picture for you can look at for that on my website too which is a nice activity for in class Hope you enjoyed this. Sorry so long. Have a great day.